Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to cover uh, covalent bonding. We covered ionic bonding and types of bonds before, and now we're going to focus on the specifics of covalent. Remember that a metal and a nonmetal transfer electrons between one another, which results in an ionic bond. When two metals mix and don't react, they form an alloy. But when you have Two nonmetals together, neither one will give away an electron, so they share their valence electrons, which forms a covalent bond. Covalent bonding makes molecules, which are specific atoms joined by sharing electrons. There are two kinds of molecules molecular compounds, which are shared by different elements, and diatomic molecules, which is two of the same atom, such as oxygen and nitrogen gas, which are both O2 and N2. There are eight elements that always form diatomic molecules. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Oxygen by itself means O2. The ogens and the enes mean diatomic molecules. And if you look, it forms a 1 plus 7 pattern on the periodic table. So that will help you remember where they are. Molecular compounds tend to have low melting and boiling points. They also have a molecular formula which shows the type and number of atoms in a molecule. The molecular formula is not necessarily the lowest ratio. For example, glucose is C6H12O6. The lowest ratio would be CH2O, which is the empirical formula, but the molecular formula is different. The formula does not tell you about how the atoms are arranged, however. So let's take a look at hydrogen ions. The nuclei of the hydrogen ions repel, but they are attracted to the electrons. So those electrons being shared between the two nuclei keep hydrogen together as a diatomic molecule. Nonmetals tend to hang on to their valence electrons. They can't give away electrons to bond. They still need the noble gas configuration, and they get it by sharing valence electrons with each other. So let's take fluorine, which has seven valence electrons. We need to have two fluorines, because it's in that 1 plus 7 structure. And by sharing, um, a second fluorine atom has seven, um, and by sharing these atoms, both end up with full orbitals. A single covalent bond is sharing of two valence electrons. Only nonmetals and hydrogens form these bonds. This is different from an ionic bond because they actually form molecules. Two specific atoms are joined in a molecule, and in, in an ionic solid you can't tell which atom the electrons move from or to. Covalent bonds are formed like a jigsaw puzzle. I have to tell you what the final formula is. You put the pieces together to end up with the right formula. For example, we're going to show how water is formed with covalent bonds. So each hydrogen has one valence electron and wants one more to achieve the noble gas configuration of helium. Each oxygen has six valence electrons and wants two more to achieve noble gas configuration. So they share to make each other happy. So now we're going to put the pieces together. So we have the hydrogen, and we put that with the oxygen, and now the first hydrogen is happy. But the oxygen still wants one more. So we bring in a second hydrogen. It bonds to the oxygen, and now everyone is happy. Each atom has full energy levels. Sometimes atoms share more than one pair of valence electrons. A double bond is when atoms share two pairs, or four total, electrons. A triple bond is when atoms share three pairs, or six total, electrons. The length of the bond is dependent on how many you have. A single bond is the longest bond, and a triple bond is the shortest because it has more connections, it pulls it tighter. Carbon dioxide is CO2. The central atom is carbon. It wants four more to make that octet. Oxygen has six 
valence electrons, it wants two more. Attaching one oxygen leaves the, leaves the oxygen one short and the carbon three short, as you can see here. Attaching the second oxygen leaves both oxygens one short and the carbon two short. The only solution is to share more. Attaching one oxygen leaves the ox so when we have these together, carbon dioxide requires double bonds. So in comes the oxygens and the carbons and vice versa for the other two. So you can see that they're sharing four electrons on each side, so that's two double bonds. So now carbon has eight valence electrons, the oxygen on the left has eight, and so does the oxygen on the right. To figure out if you need multiple bonds, you add up the valence electrons. Count up the total number of the electrons to make all the atoms happy. Subtract that number from the first number and divide by two. This tells you how many bonds, and then you draw them. You fill in the rest of the valence electrons to fill the atoms up. So let's do an example of that with ammonia. Ammonia's formula is NH3. Nitrogen, as you can see, has five valence electrons and wants three more. Hydrogen has one valence electron each and wants one more. So to figure out how many bonds we need, we add up the valence electrons. 5 plus 3 times 1 equals 8. So NH3 wants 8 plus, plus 3 times 2. That gives you 14 because we have 8 for the nitrogen, 2 for each of the hydrogens. So we've got 14. You subtract the total we have from what we want, so that's 14 minus 8, and then divide by 2, which gives us 3 bonds. We have 4 atoms with 3 bonds. Then we move the atom around and draw the bonds. So here we go. Once we've bonded them, all eight electrons are accounted for on nitrogen, and all two are accounted on for each hydrogen, and everything is full. Cyanide is another example. Carbon is the central atom on this molecule. Nitrogen has five valence electron and wants three more. Hydrogen has one and wants one more. And carbon has four and wants four more. So hydrogen carbon and nitrogen has 5 plus 1 plus 4. The total is 10 valence electrons. It wants 8 plus 2 plus 8, so it wants 18. The total bonds is 18 minus 10 divided by 2. That gives you 4 bonds. So 3 atoms with 4 bonds means that multiple bonds will happen, but remember that hydrogen can never form a multiple bond. So first we put the single bonds in. Here we go. After we put the single bonds, we need two more bonds. They must go between the carbon and the nitrogen. So there's two, and here's three. So you can see that it had a triple bond. Think of how many electrons they are away from a noble gas. So hydrogen should form one bond always, because it only needs one electron. Oxygen should form two bonds if possible, because it needs two to make eight. Carbon should form four bonds, and nitrogen should form three. So I want you to practice drawing the electron dot diagrams for these th four compounds. When you've wanted to check it out, make sure that you come and see me and I'll be happy to help you. We often use a line to indicate a bond. This is called the structural formula. Each line represents two valence electrons. Some examples would include water, cyanide, and formaldehyde. This is formaldehyde. And here's cyanide. When one atom donates both electrons in a covalent bond, it's a coordinate covalent bond. An example is carbon monoxide. Coordinate covalent bonds often happen with polyatomic ions. 
or when an element has the wrong number of bonds. Groups of atoms held together by covalent bonds with a charge are called polyatomic ions. We can't build them directly because they function as a unit. When you write them, you surround them with brackets and write the charge. Examples are ammonium and sulfate. When more than one electron dot diagram with the same connection is possible, the molecule may show resonance. Then you have a choice for the double bond. For example, nitrite could look like this or this. So which one is it, or does it go back and forth? Double bonds are shorter than single bonds. In nitrate, all the bonds are the same length. This can be indicated like this. So the mixture is a mixture of both, like a mule or a hybrid. Okay, that completes this lecture. Please see me during office hours if you have any questions, and have a great day.